Unify sent us one of their UVC G4 Pro cameras. Now, this camera's pretty cool. We've been testing. It's actually been unboxed for a little while, so I reboxed it for this. Um, not so all the plastic things are pulled off is kind of what I'm trying to say. It's not because they didn't ship it nice and clean with pieces of plastic on it. I pulled them off, but I reboxed it. Uh, so I'll share the unboxing experience minus that satisfaction of pulling off the little tabs. I will be comparing it as well to this older G3 model, uh, and we're going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons to see the quality difference. Obviously, the big change in the Pro, one, it's 4K, two, it has an optical zoom option. We're going to demo how that works on here in a second. So let's get to the unboxing and take this thing apart, open it up, give you an idea of what's inside. And we've been using it for about two months of recordings and it really hasn't had any trouble. It does get a little bit warm, but so do these. Nothing that I would say is bad warm, just like you notice it to the touch. But the bigger point is after running for several months, it's seen a few firmware updates uh, and hasn't any problems. It hasn't locked up. It hasn't caused any weird issues. This particular one, uh, it looks dirty because it is. This fell out of a warehouse. Well, it was knocked down, <laughs> to, not by us, but by a client. Um, and we brought it back and surprisingly works perfectly fine. Uh, so that's why this one's a little bit scarred up. This is also a very used one as well. Uh, but optically, uh, they're both perfectly fine. And I'm not sure, but I think this one's been bumped a couple times, but not dropped. Uh, so we've roughed it up a little bit. Part of it's testing, part of it was oops, it kind of rolled off the table. Anyways, um, that sometimes happens because these are very rolly when you don't have the things on there. All right, so let's unbox this. So first thing you see in the box is the camera and this funny looking thing. So it turns out that I, I was confused. I didn't know what this was at first. I was like, okay, this is interesting. Uh, but here's the camera, the accessories it comes with, the little boot thing, the, the cable goes through to keep it waterproof because that goes in there. We're not going to use that because we're not testing it in the water. But yes, this is a waterproof camera, so it's rated for outdoor usage. And the first thing compared to the old G3 is this is all metal. So this is uh, metal here. All this is metal, actually. Metal, metal, metal brackets versus on the G3, each piece was plastic. But they use the same sim or similar mechanism for how you adjust them where you loosen this and it tilts. So we loosen this and we can get different angles out of the camera. Same thing, we loosen this can get different angles out of the camera. But this turns out is to tighten this. So when we put this on like this, this gets in those little grooves and tightens it. So I thought that was kind of cool. So if you want to crank it down, uh, you can. It's a makes it kind of easy to do so that's just one of the little things it comes with i don't know i guess it's necessary if you really want this in there so it does have a good gasket right here uh we've had including some of these uh out in the weather including even at our shop here and they've really held up well we haven't had any of these die to weather related issues we haven't tested this one outside as much but i don't foresee any weather issues it seems to be as well made and still has the ip rating like the other one does and this is the same flat uh, bracket, so if you need to mount it to like a post, it gives you like an edge to mount it to. And when we unscrew this, you can see the alignment of how this works. Whoops. These will line up like that, like so. So you can do like mount this, zip tie it, then mount this, mount this back on top of it. And away you go. So you can put either, like, not zip ties, but uh, you could use zip ties. I don't really recommend it. But your standard uh, band clamps could go through here. And then you could put this right on top. And it leaves a little notch. If you can't go through the back, you can have this little notch uh, right here at the top. As you can, uh, so you can see it better. But the notch so the cable can come out this way. And we've had to do some of them like that when they're flush mounted against something. Or we mounted them sometimes literally against a steel plate that will... Uh, you can't really easily drill through and you'll want to pull the cable off that way. Other than that, the camera itself is pretty simple. It has a little tiny reset button right here. I've never had to use it, uh, but I guess if you forgot the password after you set one in there, that could be a problem. Other than that, standard RJ45. Now, this you can, tiny as that seems, it will stretch over an RJ45 if you really wanted to, but I don't 
truly recommend that. You're supposed to crimp the cable after you pull it through. That's the ideal way to do it. Just throwing it out there in case I've watched people forget and put it on there. And what you want to do is have an un, no end, poke it through, and then crimp the end on the cable. Now, it does come also just uh, with a couple mounting screws and the fine threaded screws that go into this are in the bag as well. So they are, they are here. So if you need them, you got them. Now, when you have it side by side with the G3, you can see there is a bit of a size difference between them. Not substantial. The base mount is ever so slightly bigger, but not much. But where the camera adds a little bit more bulk, it certainly has uh, more weight. But either one of these are not very substantial. This feels really light compared to this one. But that's because of the optics and the optical zoom that this has inside of there. So uh, let's go ahead and get these mounted to our board and do the actual part that matters to me, the testing. What does the quality look like? How does these work? And we're going to be testing this with a Cloud Key Gen 2 and the new Unify Protect software. Now, one thing I'd really like to note with this camera is when it's doing the motion detection, this little spinny part is just really cool. But uh, this is something that it only does when you hook it up to Unify Protect. I connected it to the older version of the Unify video software that's discontinued for those of you that didn't know, but still supported. Uh, it won't do the spinny thing, but the camera did work with it. So that's one of the reasons we're doing everything with the Protect software, because it's the new software that's out there for uh, Unify. It is their new roadmap versus the uh, older just Unify video, as it was called. But yeah, the spinny thing, really cool. That's definitely uh, wins in my book compared to this one. All right, so let's get these mounted. So we'll start with the technical details. The G4 Pro camera, has a 4K Ultra HD, which is 3840 by 2160 at 24 frames per second. Wide angle zoom lens, but as we said, it has an optical uh, zoom. IP67 rated weather resistance, enhanced low light performance, 802.3 AF and AT support, built in microphone, and of course the mounting uh, that we've shown you in the video. Now, this is a picture of the rig that I built. Uh, don't laugh at my carpentry skills. That's not why you're here. And uh, this is what's holding the cameras as close as possible together. So I can try to make a direct comparison between the UVC G4 and the G3. Now, here is the cameras both set up and configured in Unify Protect. And I zoomed in the G3, uh, or I'm sorry, the G4 to be as close equivalent as we can get it here. Uh, so they're both on this stand. And now let's go and check the audio between these two cameras. This is an audio test of the Unify cameras. I'm gonna check between both of them. I'm holding my tape measure, so I'm seven feet away. Hopefully you can hear me talking. How about Steve, can you hear Steve talking? Hi everybody. Hi, right, Steve said hi everybody. I just wanna do the audio test and get that out of the way, then we'll talk about the images. This is an audio test of the Unify cameras. I'm gonna check between both of them. I'm holding my tape measure, so I'm seven feet away. Hopefully you can hear me talking. How about Steve? Can you hear Steve talking? Hi, everybody. Hi, right, Steve said hi, everybody. I just want to do the audio test and get that out of the way, then we'll talk about the images. So as you can tell between these two cameras, the audio is quite usable. Uh, it's got a slightly different sound profile. I'm not sure which one I really prefer, but I could definitely hear both of them perfectly fine and didn't, didn't have any issues with it. The uh, audio on the G3s we've been collecting for a long time, I should say. Uh, it has helped some of our clients solve issues because audio gives context to video. Uh, you can see two people that may be engaged in some type of argument, but having context and that audio has been helpful uh, for our clients that have this, especially at the cash area of a restaurant, uh, to help solve disputes and debates. Audio, not everyone expects it to be recording audio. Uh, check the legalities of that in your state if that's a concern, but it has been a big help to clients when they're trying to sort things out. Now, I would say that the cover colors are definitely more vivid on the 4K. That's kind of an obvious thing to say, but they are. It does look really good. But we're going to go ahead and grab a screenshot out of each of these and pixel peep a little bit here and dig in close. So first we're going to look as I stuck a bottle of hot sauce, set it on top of one of my lights, and let's see if we can read it with the uh, G3 here. So you can, down the corner it says this is the 1920 by 1086 and that's pretty pixelated. We can't quite tell what that is. Close that and look at the other one. We have a few more pixels to work with here. So it's not the best, but we can about read this. 
And things in the background too, if we're looking at, like we'll look at this Arizona and maybe some thing my wife left, which looks like some uh, <laughs> Mick Ultras <laughs> when she's recording her podcast here. Big difference. I mean, we can see this. You can make out that it's in Arizona, but it's pretty pixelated compared to this here. So there's a pretty substantial difference in the amount of pixels you get. Of course, it's 4K, but uh, it definitely looks pretty good. Now, the next thing to test is going to be like the low light performance. How do these two perform in low light? Well, let's go turn the lights off and find out. So there's a clear difference in low light. The 4K camera is really great in low light. I can see things quite well. Matter of fact, we're getting some reflection back from the fridge at the back of the office, but things are quite crisp. Things look great in here. I'm zooming in a little bit and it's it's pretty good. Now, this is not the optical zoom. This is just the regular zoom on there. And we'll go ahead and look at this one full screen. And zooming in doesn't really do anything for us because you're zooming into pixels because this is a 1080 screen recorded at 1080. So you're just, uh, you're not really doing any good here. You're not actually getting more pixels. You're just, well, zooming in and pixelating things. But you can see the graininess in this as compared to uh, this. So there's, you know, pretty big difference there in terms of how the picture and quality looks. Now, the thing to really note though is the zoom. That's where things get good on this. So if we go over here and go to the optical zoom, one, we can zoom out. Take a second and you're seeing obviously a lot more. So side by side, here's this all the way zoomed out. You can see a lot more of the studio versus this right here. So pretty substantial difference on those. Actually, we can go. So you can see a pretty big difference when you uh, direct side by side them right here. And the 4K one is this one here, obviously, without even a hesitation. It's a whole lot wider. And of course, if we go the other way, we want to go back over to the cameras. We want to zoom them in more. And we'll zoom it in all the way here. You can see a really big difference. Now, I will note this little dot right here is something inside the camera. Uh, this was a demo unit shipped to us from Unify. Uh, Message them about it, haven't heard back, but it, it's something inside the lens. Matter of fact, we jostled it around a bit and couldn't really get it to move, uh, but a little bit. It was a little bit over in one corner and it came over to here. So I don't know if it's a dust spec or what. It's not, it doesn't appear to be a dead pixel because it'll actually, when you're focusing, uh, move a little bit like you it'll come in and out of focus and actually use it almost like a focus point and we're actually going to take these cameras outside now so we can uh, show a better difference between them all right so we're going to start with the g3 and one of the things that's interesting to me even at default and let me play with this setting real quick here ldc for lens distortion correction it's on by default and it kind of gets rid of the fisheye effect so this is what it looks like we'll make it full screen and you can see like these posts that are in the front and the door is kind of bowed on here. So it's got like a little bit of a bubble effect. And if we switch over to turning that off, we see the image goes back to being square. So we have your normal square image, like normal on this, but the, the image quality is not amazing, but it's, you know, reasonable on this camera. Uh, when it's outside and it has a much warmer color tone to it but you can tune these in some of the settings on the G3 than the G4 has. So let's switch over to the G4. Now I'm gonna start with the G4 being completely wide and the interesting thing is there is no lens distortion correction option which I thought was kind of strange it's just not in the options here. Let's actually turn this to 4k. There we go. So now we're at 4k really crispy really nice in terms of uh, the picture quality on there and then of course we can zoom in with the uh, optical zoom here go all the way there's that little dot that i don't know what it is but you can see it's inside the lens there and you can see i can read quite clearly what it says across there you can even read the numbers on our sign the phone number and everything else matter of fact we can go ahead and screen grab out of here and it's quite easy to see that this is the uh, Beaumont Sleep Apnea Center right across the street from us we can see the uh, phone numbers here 
Yeah, pretty good. It's a little bit, it's an angle, so it's a bit hard to read, but we can see across the street. We can certainly see this car it grabbed and uh, no problem stopping the motion on that. So it definitely looks good in terms of that. So it's definitely, the quality's good. Uh, the outdoor is really great. They are a definite step up from the G3 in terms of picture quality. Now I will note, and I don't know why, but occasionally you may have noticed that this stutter happens with this one. I have not seen it in actual recordings. This is something that it does in the live feed, but doesn't seem to do in any of the recordings. So when we go to play back those same recordings, there is a notable, um, like there's no weird stutter issue. That's how I describe it. I've seen it do it where it says like connecting and spinning, but when you go, let's go over here like to the uh, live view, Close these, actually close these and look at the events. And I think it was when we were looking at it right here, changing a setting, it plays back without the stutter. So I don't, I have not seen it in any of the recordings, but I will admit I have seen that in case you're wondering and I wanted to make sure I address it now before it comes up as a comment later. The last thing I'll cover with this camera is the wide dynamic range. So I've tested it, this is fully on. And okay, you can we're looking in the shadows here because uh, wide dynamic range balances varying lighting within the camera's capture. So we're gonna look at the shadow that my car is creating right here, so we can kind of see the shadow there, and we can look at this bar right here. So it's wide dynamic range on, gives us a little bit of light, and we'll look at the shadow in the tree back here. So now let's go ahead and turn it all the way off and watch what happens to those shadows. Takes a second for the camera to catch up. All right, and now it's caught up and you can see the we can't see any texture on the bar anymore. The shadow's gotten darker over here, so there's a little bit less uh, detail. And the same with the shadow where the tree is over here. So the wide dynamic range is nice. It's not dramatic. It's not like, you know, the Google Pixel with its night sight or something amazing like that. Uh, but it's there and it doesn't seem to hurt turning it on. So I definitely would leave it on. Um, other than that, the camera seems to work quite well. It's got other, you know, fine tuning you can do here with the uh, hue and play with the color in a little bit of case you want that warmer color or colder color to match the other cameras but uh, my overall impression I like the camera it works really well now the one side note I will mention in case you're wondering what I'm watching this on this is and we'll look at the version right here this is the Unify Protect running on a Gen 2 cloud key Gen 2 Plus. This is one of the only, at this moment, is one of the only devices I'm aware of that support the Unify Protect system. Uh, Unify probably plans to, you know, release it for other, device, uh, other devices that are higher end, but you cannot just download the Protect software. It only works with the Gen uh, 2 Plus. Also, I have an SSD in here. One of the first challenges we had recording was when you start recording 4K and you wanted to play it back, you may have noticed that when I go here, it plays back rather quick and doesn't have much lag, that is because we put an SSD in. When you record with 4K cameras and you don't have an SSD in the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus, it chokes a lot. The drive they shipped it with was a 5400 RPM Toshiba, and this was just a notable problem with it for getting the files out. It would just pause and pause. And same thing with the recording. Uh, it was very laggy, and I assumed in correctly that if we swap to hard drive it would get better uh, so I'm still going to haven't done a review yet but I will be doing a review soon on the gen 2 plus but I will admit having a SSD in here for the recording yes that sounds expensive to record your stuff on an SSD but I found that it solved the problem with the 4k this is supposed to support several 4k cameras yeah per their sheet 20 cameras it doesn't specify whether or not they're 4k but we did note that the 4k cameras are very laggy on this Gen 2 Plus when I was using a standard hard drive. Not using a standard hard drive, so we popped an SSD in there, worked wonderfully. Uh, even with a, we did try at one time a Western Digital Black uh, hard drive and it was okay. It works, but if you're gonna have a few of these 4K cameras, um, hate to break the news to you, but you're probably gonna wanna go with a SSD in here if you want faster performance. Maybe that's not something you're looking for, but uh, it, it's obviously a choke point because once you have several 4K streams going, the hard drive has to be able to store those and has to be able to write them at the date at the data rate that's coming in. So if you think about an motion event that's going on with several cameras at once, it may be a problem. We only have one camera to test with, so I don't know the whole scalability of this. But I thought I'd mention that's what you're, we're watching this on. 
We did a lot of the testing on the standard Unify video software, and because that's running on a RAID array uh, currently that we have set up for our office recording and all of our other cameras, they had no problems there at all working uh, with the standard Unify video software. But as I mentioned, and I can leave a link to that video, that particular software has been discontinued. All right, thanks. And if you're interested, I'll leave links where you can get these uh, on Amazon if you're interested in the camera. But overall, it, the picture quality is nice on it. The audio quality is reasonable. And it's definitely a nice upgrade to the G3. So if you have a uh, something you wanted to monitor with some 4K cameras, that is an option on there. I will note, though, it does not support OMVIF. Uh, so this camera is specifically made to work with either the Unify Protect or the Unify Video software, but not necessarily at this time. It doesn't have OMVIF support, but it does do RTSP, so that's an option. Uh, so it does have support for that. So that makes it kind of limited. It is only going to be used with Unify products is the idea on this. So if you're looking for something that you want to use with a non-Unify product, this might not be the right camera for you. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.